Well, welcome everybody to a new edition of One Man Cups. Um, my name is James Mitchell, and I'll be your host for today. Yeah. <laughs> this is Logan. He'll be the tech guy for uh, today. Um, just to give you guys a quick overview. First, I'm going to go through the history of One Man Cups. After that is going to be the the presentation, and then we're going to go through some Q&A, and after that, we're going to close it off. Straight, simple, to the point. Okay, to start off, uh, One Man Cups was created by the uh, Kaufman, Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation. And the purpose of this foundation was to work with communities in entrepreneurship and education to increase opportunities that allows all people to learn, to take their uh, take risks, and to own their own success. And they did that with One Man Cups. But what is One Man Cups? Is it One Man Cups of Coffee? Is it, you know, One Man just whatever. Um, <laughs> one Man Cups is a free weekly program that uh, educates, engages, and connects all local entrepreneurs. Um, it's an environment and it's a community where you can get to have different conversations with different entrepreneurs. Um, the, um, the overall mission behind One Man Cups is to lower the barrier of access to education, resources, and connection for all new uh, and aspiring entrepreneurs throughout the United States like yourself. Um, in the beginning, it started off with a few communities, um, and then it grew. Uh, it started off at Kansas City from one community, and it grew all the way to 163 communities. Um, now, I think it's around 200 communities. It should be more than that. Um, but at each community, though, there's usually one to two presentations a week. Um, each presenter um, usually has one, six minutes to present and 15 minutes of Q&A. Um, today, we only have one presenter. His name is Kevin. Um, and... For our audience, if you do want to be like having a join One Man Cups and, you know, host on our platform, please, you know, follow our chapter at www.onemancups.com slash Chico. And with that being said, Kevin, can you please, please take the stage and, you know, share us, share us uh, your information while you're here. Absolutely. Well, thank you, James. Let me just get my presentation ready here. Sure. Okay, well, thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. And you see my screen okay? Uh, my name is Kevin Cochran, as you mentioned, and I'm the founder and CEO of Jackie Mays Burger. So I started Jackie Mays in Sacramento before the pandemic, and uh, we, but we recently relocated to near Dallas, Texas, in a great student college market. Uh, to open our first restaurant in Denton, Texas. And you might ask, um, you know, why did I start Jackie Mays? Uh, well, how many of you wanted to be a park ranger when you were growing up? Well, I did. I did because I loved the mountains. And later I went to college near the beach because I loved the ocean. But now, sadly, the mountains are on fire and the oceans are beginning to cook. So I founded Jackie Mays as a way to make a difference by creating a sustainable company that is kind to the environment, to people, and to animals, and also that provides uh, better food options for those looking for quality, quick service. So just imagine the fast food not only tasted great, but was also convenient, inexpensive, it was also healthier, climate friendly, and cruelty free. See, the problem is that a nationwide sustainable fast food chain, it just doesn't exist. People want to purchase from sustainable brands and they're eating more plant-based foods, but the underlying problem is there's a scarcity of sustainable food options and our reliance on animal agriculture that negatively impacts our planet and our health. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is to disrupt the fast food industry with Jackie Mays Burger and make it the locations ubiquitous like Starbucks. So we serve 100% plant-based burgers, fries and shakes for meat lovers and vegans alike. We have a simple low price menu like In-N-Out Burger. And we have, at scale, small physical locations like the Dutch Brothers Coffee and Checkers with their closed kitchens and double drive-throughs. 
So a little bit about me. Uh, I worked for a decade in the restaurant industry early in my career. I was the original general manager in a, on the startup team of Freebirds World Burrito. Uh, it has about 50 restaurants uh, in the Western United States. Uh, since then, I've led teams in e-commerce and product management in the internet and clean tech industries. Uh, just a little bit of uh, trivia nostalgia. There's a picture at the bottom there with my good friend, Mark Orfala, the founder of Freebirds and me in front of our first store at UC Santa Barbara, uh, just after we graduated from college. So we've held three pop-up events. This one here was at uh, William Land Park in Sacramento and had great reviews. Uh, the other two were at Sac State and the Sacramento Midtown Market, and they went great too. And here I'll to them yourself. Oh, it's bomb. That's a good burger. That's a good burger. Hope it makes you hungry for a burger. They were a lot of fun doing uh, those pop-ups. Uh, so we have a great team. I'm honored to have these individuals on our board of advisors, each with significant experience in their respective areas in restaurants, in plant-based space, sustainability, marketing, and branding, and in startup and product. Guys, on your side, you're a little, you're a little softer on the microphone. What makes our concept unique? Well, we've lowered prices to bring our delicious plant-based menu to the fast food masses. Hey, uh, Kevin, can you speak up? Sorry to interrupt. Can you speak up yeah. a little bit? So we'll do that by offering uh, driving down costs, and especially in our, um, you know, streamline our model based on our smaller uh, footprint, adding at automation and robotics, increase efficiencies, and really leveraging high-tech marketing and more. So it's a white hot screaming market in the plant-based space. Um, we're looking to open 40 stores in the next five years and over 400 in the next 10. Our projections are for nearly $40 million in system-wide sales by 2026 and over half billion by uh, 2031. We closed our initial pre-seed round of funding before early last year at $30,000. And that was to uh, open our pop-ups, build awareness, and also identify our first site, which we have. Uh, we're currently in our seed round of funding and we're raising $750,000. And we'll soon launch our uh, food trailer. And then later this year, we're gonna open our first restaurant. So it's a huge opportunity, we're very excited. Uh, we project an IPO for as an exit for investors. So we invite you to join us on our mission to become the leading sustainable fast food brand. And uh, please visit our website, sign up uh, on our email list. Thank you very much. And I look forward to your questions. That's a very good presentation. Um, as our next part of our program, we're going to uh, go into our Q&A. So if anybody from our audience would like to ask Kevin a question, now's the time. Yeah, um, in your pop-up videos, there was somebody said, oh, they mentioned in and out I noticed that your um, brand colors and everything, not the yellow part, but is a little bit similar. It looks like the pictures are a little bit similar. Can you tell me about that? <laughs> uh, sure, sure. Well, actually, our brand colors are almost closer to uh, A and W root beer. Uh, we have, we have uh, they're basically a a uh, it's kind of a burnt orange and and uh, brown. Um, okay. And you know, In and Out is really red and white. Um, and so, but our orange is is closer to a red. Uh, but uh, it's true. We we have uh, modeled our our menu, and we are um, our food is similar to In-N-Out Burger, although it is 100% plant based. We consider In-N-Out 
uh, one of our prime competitors, along with you know, the other fast food industry. Uh, and uh, indirect competitors would be the plant-based companies that are, that are all launching. And, and they're really more, most of them are in the fast casual space uh, rather than the fast food space. Uh, and when I say that, I mean, you know, we have our signature burger is under $5. Uh, where theirs are many times in the you know nine, ten, eleven, twelve dollar range, and uh, they have uh, their locations are set up more as destination restaurants and provide more of a um, you know a service to their their customer, individual service. Whereas we're really based on price, convenience, and uh, and quality too. So. Um, where are you producing the burgers, or how? I mean, I very fond of beyond burger and incredible burger and all of those you guys are actually creating these on your own and someone's how are you doing that so so basically what we do is we start with the premium plant-based meats and uh then we add our own components to it to increase the nutrition and the taste quality profile uh, and those include mm -hmm. adding mushrooms lentils and uh, our own spices to the premium meats like Impossible Foods and uh, Beyond Meat. Um, so we'll only focus on those, those premium quality meats. And you have to understand that they've, they've spent an enormous amount of resources, money, they've raised uh, you know, millions and millions of dollars to get those, uh, those to mimic meat. And, and so we're uh, not looking to recreate the wheel per se, uh, however, as we innovate and grow and when our resources become such that we can uh, begin to uh, do, do other types of alternative meats, we will. And we'll even consider cultivated meat uh, as an option for our customers. Uh, and that, that is uh, you know, lab-grown meat. Um, anything that is uh, cruelty-free and climate-friendly, uh, we will consider adding to our menu. That's great. Have you gotten any... Um feedback i mean it looking at your the, the actual menu like it does look like in an out burger i'm just curious if anyone or if in an out burger would be like what are you doing it looks like our menu you know what i mean but so i was just sure. <laughs> well honestly um if you look at kind of a diner menu uh you'll find similar types of uh, layouts and, and uh, menus so we're not necessarily um uh, copying their menu per se uh, we will have value meals like In-N-Out does, but so do, you know, McDonald's and, and Wendy's and, and others. But um, yeah, they, they focus on, on low price food and we will too. And, um, and ours will be simple and even simpler uh, than In-N-Out because we do look at them as a competitor. I don't think that it's proprietary per se, you know, they're, the way they present their menu. So we're not worried about liability or anything like that. Uh, okay. That was more what I was going for. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you for the questions. Yeah, I do. Um, <clears throat> hey, Kevin, uh, I have a quick question for you. So, um, you know, you're starting up Jackie Mays, you know, you have the background, you know, the experience, you know, you have the C funding, you have the money, you know, you have the plan. Can you um, explain to some of the entrepreneurs in this room, like what are the challenges you're currently facing or have faced in your pursuit to like making this, um, a franchise. Oh, do you hear me? Hello? Uh, so I've been an entrepreneur to weather the highs and, un and lows. So my internet connection is a little unstable, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Yeah, so, so basically, the, the, the biggest thing is, you know, you're going to have good days as, as uh, in a startup company, and you're going to have days that uh, you just cannot believe what's happened. And, you know, uh, it feels like the, the world is, is closing in on you type of thing. So, and my uh, advice is to always wait for the next day and uh, take a breath because things change and they change pretty quickly. So, Specifically, you know, we're in a funding round and, you know, the market is really great for plant-based uh, and um, these alt-protein alt companies. Uh, so we're fortunately in that 
in that bubble. But at the same time, the general market is, uh, you know, going through gyrations due to the pandemic and to some of the political ongoings in, in the different countries and in stock markets going up and down. Uh, so that does not help, uh, you know, what we're doing. So that means we need to look for alternative funding routes. Uh, and uh, so we are. And we also have to kind of get down to, to the basics. And, and so we are launching a food trailer, uh, not just going into a restaurant right away. We're going to, to sell our food and uh, build our market uh, in something that is a lower cost, lower risk type of uh, endeavor as we move forward into uh, you know, getting into the, the restaurant space. But we also have a, a lease that's, uh, that we're uh, going into where we have to, we're doing a build out and we're gonna build the restaurant to our spec uh, for the most part. We're very excited about that. Um, so as far as, um, you know, you need to have a plan when you're uh, to fall back on, uh, but uh, you know, you also be, have to be able to pivot. And that's what we did too, by moving from Sacramento to Texas. Uh, by looking at the markets and saying, you know, if we're, if we're going to have this downtime through the pandemic, where would we really want to launch our business? And I love Sacramento and I can't wait to get back there and open a restaurant and, and several restaurants uh, in, in town and, and around California. But um, the market in Texas is really an uh, interesting one for us. So we, uh, we pivoted and that's what you have to do as, a, as an entrepreneur. You have to look at the opportunities and the challenges and um, see what you're up against and, uh, and make changes to that plan. But you have to have a plan to start with. Yeah, I was really surprised that you were in Texas considering that's the land of like cow ranching. And <laughs> I was like, oh, they're starting in Texas. That's interesting. How that, I'm surprised that there's such a big market for plant-based <laughs> compared to California. Absolutely. Yeah. So in, in a way, you know, we see our, our business is really truly, and I know people, uh, some people, look at our company and say, you really need to go to um, Seattle and Portland and uh, focus in the real green kind of um, areas, you know, that uh, people are, are uh, already way down the path on sustainability and, and so forth. Um, but honestly, if you get our mission, then when we say that we're for meat lovers, we're not kidding. This food, you cannot tell the difference and we're looking to create a fast food chain irrespective of the uh, plant-based uh, quality to it. Uh, so, you know, people don't eat meat because you have to slaughter animals to have meat. They eat it in spite of that. Uh, meat tastes great uh, and people want it, but if you can create an alternative that tastes as good and is better for you, healthier and the environment, we believe that uh, meat eaters in Texas and everywhere uh, are going to flock to it. So once we can prove that in our market, and we're not just starting, you know, in, um, I mean, we're starting, we're, we're trying to incubate it in an, uh, college markets that are more amenable to it. So, you know, in uh, Denton, uh, it's a progressive uh, college student body. They already have a vegan dining hall and uh, a lot of people know about plant-based foods. So it seems a little counterintuitive at, at the big scale, but we believe once we get some traction here and open a few restaurants that the other, um, you know, moving into Dallas and to Houston and Austin and, and um, you know, San Antonio, the other towns are gonna, you know, see the success and, and we'll have the reviews by then, so, et cetera. So it's gonna be great, yeah, converting the meat lovers uh, into uh, plant-based. And, and they're gonna they're gonna love it. We have another question from the audience here. Hi, Kevin. Um, thank you for your presentation. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Sorry, I can't. Oh. Okay. Let me come over here. I just unplugged something. Sorry. Okay. All right, Kevin. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can hear you. Okay, fantastic. Um, first of all, thank you for your presentation. Second of all, um, uh, one of the slides where your sound cut out was about your kind of your your startup team. I'd love it if you could go back over that slide. Oh, and sure. My last, oh. And my last question has to do with um, the funding model that you're going after. Like, 
I understand what stage you're at, but um, are you doing a combination of different things? You know, are you doing a combination of friends, family, and fools? Are you doing, you know, are you doing friend? Uh, is it a platform play for like a Kickstarter or a WeFunder? Are you presenting to VCs? Um, so first question had to do with the team and the second has to do with the funding model. Thank you. Sure, sure. Well, thank you for uh, bringing me back to the team and uh, areas that you didn't hear the presentation. And what I, I was saying is I'm really honored to have my board of advisors. They've been with me from the very beginning. Uh, some of them, even before that, uh, uh, you'll you'll notice uh, my wife is an advisor to us. She's been advisor in a, a previous venture of mine, and um, and uh, so. But we have experts in their area domain uh, have significant domain experience in each of their respective areas in restaurants, in the plant based space, in sustainability, in marketing and branding, and in startups and human resources. Um, so I'm honored to have them on our board. As far as our funding model, uh, we are currently in our seed funding round, and we do have a minimum. It's uh, not a friends and family round, although friends and family are welcome to participate. Uh, it is There is a minimum ticket of $25,000 investment for qualified investors. Those are accredited investors that have a certain net worth and have been in the investment market before, so they they understand the risks uh, and rewards of startup companies. Um, at the same time, we are pursuing an SBA loan for our eventual uh, location restaurant that will help finance our you know, equipment and the build out um, of the uh, location. And, and then the plan is to use those resources both from, and we are, I should also say, uh, presenting to venture capital companies that do invest in early stage companies. There aren't that many that, uh, that uh, focus or work with restaurants, but there are a few. And in the plant-based space, uh, there are uh, some. They like to see revenue. We're pre-revenue currently, but we're opening our food trailer. We're gonna have revenue in the next few months. And we'll go back to those investors. We may extend our round if we don't um, hit our target um, in the near term, but we have our resources uh, from our previous funding to launch our trailer. So the, uh, by raising the funding, hitting or oversubscribing to our round will be enough to propel us into our second restaurant where we'll do another um, SBA loan. So we'll find some somewhat with debt and then uh, after we have two restaurants open, we plan to go to the venture capital community and raise a four to five million dollar round so that we can expand through fran uh, franchising. That's our plan. And the one thing that we could uh, introduce along the way is a crowdfunding campaign. There's been several uh, successful plant-based companies like Honey Bee Burger, for example. They have two restaurants uh, in the Los Angeles area and they did an equity crowdfunding round and raised $1.8 million from the people uh, in their community and others that uh, really see the potential of what they're doing. And it's a fast casual uh, restaurant. Some of these call themselves uh, fast food, but uh, if you really look at it, uh, they haven't quite uh, made, made it down to the fast food level, but they might uh, in the future. And that's great. The more the merrier, in my, in my opinion, it's really a small slice of the you know, $130 billion market in the US that is just dominated by McDonald's, um, Wendy's and Burger King and, and all of the fast food giants. So our plant base is, is still a very small speck. Uh, we, we look to change that very soon. So we could do a crowd, equity crowdfunding round at some point before our venture capital. We'll see how that goes uh, in terms of raising funding in this, in this kind of strange market now and for our next, next uh, restaurant. I hope that answers answers your question. Yes, it does, fantastic. I think we had another question from the audience. Oh, well, I was gonna ask, is there any more uh, questions from the audience before we wrap up? Yeah, you can come or you can tell me either way. Hey, Jeff, you wanna come on? 
So, hey, uh, can you hear me, Kevin? I can. Okay, cool. Well, first of all, thank you for coming out. Uh, earlier, there were some parts of your business that's similar to in and out uh, I just wanted to talk about employees because uh, in and out they hire employees differently they they pay them a lot more money they let mm -hmm. them go to different locations you know if they move somewhere else that kind of stuff uh, i just want to know um will you be uh, copying the model of uh how in and out handles their employees or will you be taking a different approach to ensure uh, high quality and uh, good customer service thank you that's an excellent excellent question so, you know, I'm a, a student of the fast food industry, so I really admire um, companies that do a great job with their employees. Uh, and, you know, I, I really like the, um, the uh, Danny Meyer approach based, basically, uh, he has a hierarchy of hospitality and, and he values his employees first and then his customers and then his stakeholders in the company and uh, I uh, echo that so so we will look at in and out because they do pay their and also Chick-fil-A for example they um, really invest in their managers and uh, and they, they their pay is a six-figure income um, for those that manage the store and, and and workers have the opportunity to advance um, you know, our goal is to do the same, uh, same thing with Dutch Brothers Coffee. Uh, they also make it a very um, rewarding experience to be part of their team. And they make it fun. And we, we plan to have robotics and automation so we can keep our labor costs overall, fewer employees, but pay them better is our strategy. And um, we know we have to compete with the uh, others in the market. Fortunately, our planet-friendly message is very um, in tune with uh, sort of the college market that we do our recruiting from in our early restaurants. And um, yeah, so I think it will also evolve, but uh, it has to be based on principles and your, your philosophy. And my philosophy, again, is to place the employee at the top of the hierarchy and really have, um, and then also in franchising too, we plan to reinvest in our communities, uh, do community uh, equity crowdfunding so communities can have a, a stake in their, in their um, local Jackie Mace Burger, providing health, healthier options to their community. Uh, by the same token, you know, elevating their employees and their staff is uh, our, our goals. Now, now, we're not there yet, so uh, those specific policies will come but they'll be based on those principles. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, we're gonna go to our last question before we close. And the last question is this, how can we as a woman Coast community help you, Kevin, with uh, uh, you opening up your trailer and huh? you open up your trailer and soon to be restaurant. How can we as a, a woman Cups community help you with that? Oh, thank you very much for asking. Yeah. You know, right now it's a very uh, critical time for us uh, in the promotion of our, our business. And I think as we uh, put ourselves out there virtually on social media, I think, I think uh, being active uh, can, can really help us. So everyone in your community, if they could go and sign up to be on our email distribution list, uh, you'll receive, uh, you know, periodic updates, and then, you know, like us on Facebook, and on Twitter, and Instagram, and LinkedIn. Uh, we're not on Twi uh, TikTok yet, but uh, we plan to be there at some point. Uh, so um, I think, you know, any, anybody that could do postings, uh, share our postings, all of that will be really, uh, really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh we will definitely, uh, we should be able to promote it and we should be able to uh, promote on all our platforms as well as, uh, you know, like and share it from your pages as well. Uh, just a quick question from Heather. Uh, and if you can answer this in a short, brief uh, uh, time, uh, when do you plan on opening in, uh, in Sacramento? 
Uh, well, it's going to take us about two years to franchise, and then one of our first uh, uh, next steps will be opening a company store in in the next market. So we're looking okay. at a you know two to four year time frame. Okay. Realistically. Evan, have you? Um, I don't know. Just I don't know why this just popped in my head, but I'm sure you've heard of Gold Belly. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Say one more time. Um, ha have you heard of Gold Belly? It's kind of it's the uh, yeah. I have. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that's crossed your mind at all. I mean, I know that's probably production wise right now. It might might be a little bit difficult, but just the thought of I don't know what it is to be a vendor on there or a member, however it ever it works, but people are able to order from all over the place. Um, um I don't know how so, that would work. It just popped in my head all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Now uh it's gold belly, correct? Correct. Yeah. Now I vaguely remember this as being a platform for um uh, uh you can order from food. any there's it's grown quite a bit um but i mean you can order a pizza from a pizza parlor on the boardwalk in new jersey you can I order see. from del taco you can order from so i, I just I, in my head that might be something you know right. again production wise and trying to do that but just a thought thank you very much yeah, well, we're trying, I mean, we plan to uh, advertise on these uh, platforms that provide uh, third-party services, but mm -hmm. at the same time, we're, we take the stance of like Domino's Pizza that uh, believes that delivery is really a cost center. It's not a business unit, and uh, it doesn't really make sense for us to um, pay those types of uh, costs to have other, others deliver our product. Uh, and not have the customer experience of Jackie Mays Burger. Sure. So, so we have to be very sensitive to that and really drive them to our app so that they come and order from Jackie Mays. And then we have our own delivery drivers, which is really a, you know, ancillary part of our business. We're not focusing on delivery, but we will have delivery. Uh, but yeah, advertising and those types of platforms is important to get out there in front of people. Yeah. Thank you very much, Heather. Yeah, no problem. All right, everybody, can you give Kevin a round of applause? Kevin, we really appreciate you for stopping by. I'm going to close this off really quick. Logan, if you can pull up uh, the slides. I think you could share real quick, Kevin. There it is. Okay, in closing, uh, I'd like to thank Eva Shepard as well as Logan. Uh, for hosting this uh, platform, hosting this presentation today with me. And I'd also like to thank our community sponsors. I'd like to thank Morgan Stanley. I'd like to thank Chico Start, uh, GrowTech, Global Entrepreneurship Network, T-Bar, Build.com, Startup Grind, Explore View County, and last but not least, of course, Stobel Coffee. Um, for our One Man Cups audience, uh, if you want to join us next Wednesday, we're going to have Ford Forestry. And I believe he's helping loggers uh, find a way to market their their logs logs and lumber. So that's gonna be interesting. And for anybody that wants to know about business resources or business workshops or business help, please sign up for our Chico Start newsletter. There's a QR code, you can scan it and you'll be able to get uh, up to dates on, you know, workshops and work resources, et cetera. So yeah, thank you all for showing up and thank you, Kevin, again, for uh, showing up. Thanks so much. Thank you, thank you. Have a good one. Take care. Take care.